studio. And I think for that, I say the problem what we face uh, in, in India is that we, we lack trained professionals, be it camera, uh, uh, people who sit on DI machines and operate color grading, to people who sit on the visual effects, mon you know, in front of the monitor and do graphics. So I think trained professionals are what we need, and we need every studio to come up with their own innovative pipeline. Because it's not just this pipeline works in this studio, so I'm going to ape just the same exact thing. Not necessarily, because I may have an IT manager who says maybe something else can work for my pipeline that necessarily doesn't have to for the other person. So training, I think, should be given in all aspects. Uh, be it to, to put a scanner and calibrate it, it with, with your DI machine to your recorder. You know, still we, we still need to record the film from digital to print. So I think that needs to be done. And for that, we need events like NAB mm -hmm. needs to happen here. Like, because NAB is where the entire world comes together. And, you know, I saw him in NAB also two, three years ago, where, you know, they, they introduce new machines, they introduce new scanners, they introduce new software that, that the markets can use. So I think events like that need to happen here, where our industry is made familiar with what is actually available internationally. Because quality-wise, if you see, like, abroad, they're way ahead, standard. Well, I mean, we don't lack anything. We, we, we have the creative sense, we have story sense, we have all the talent available in India. What we need is the right platform and the right use of technology. I just can't like, get all the technology in the world, put it in my office and not know how to use it. So I think that's, that's where the change has to happen. But, but Ron, uh, I think the basic point being like uh, Sandra was mentioning earlier, that people forget what technology is used for. It's not meant as an, it's more like an asset to your company or to your production or whatever you're trying to portray more than just because it's there and it's the in thing, use it. That's not the reason why technology is built. For example, when I was doing my show, I used a certain amount of technology, like a watch of technology in my show. But then again, you know, you need to know where to draw a line as to where it stops, where you use it and where you don't. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that in the end, you are selling live product, meaning it is acting or is it cinema, whatever it may be. It is performing arts. It's not just about the technology and the visual arts. Uh, we think so. Um, I mean, it may not be immediately apparent, and sometimes you might have to tell people what you're watching, uh, because if you don't tell them, they, you know, they come for the film, and they tend to, you know, miss out on the finer details of, you know, technology, which is the way it's meant to be. But then, you know, when you tell them, then they tend to have a, a greater level of appreciation for the technology that goes behind it, or the, the visual experience that they have. Um, you know, we've been at the forefront of uh, digital cinema, uh, you know, on the exhibition front in India. We were the first. We started in 1995, I mean 2005, I'm sorry, with the first 2K projectors within, within the country, and today we are all digital. I think by next year or near, you know, just a year, as soon as 4K releases, we will be all 4K. That's a commitment that we made. I think we want to be on the cutting edge of technology. We have lost as a result of being on the cutting edge of technology. When I say we've lost, we've lost financially because, you know, equipment prices keep coming down. What we bought for twice the price at that time is, is, is actually probably just, you know, I mean, half, it's, it's half of it right now. Um, but, you know, it's definitely worth it. I mean, it's worth being on the cutting edge because there's a certain learning, you're ahead of the curve, and that's what creates that excitement. I mean, I wouldn't be in this industry if I didn't have that excitement, if I didn't believe that, you know, I could do better. I mean, the day I believe that, you know, I've maxed it out, or I can't do any better, I should find another industry to be in. Well, uh, like Vadi had mentioned, I think it's a very, very fine balance that we need to achieve because it is, um, at the end of the day, a very human product for a human audience. And there has to be that element, that, that essence of art that transcends where we use technology as something of an accessory that can help uh, or um, give you options and expand that horizon but not become the product itself. So today in music, um, I've had the opportunity to be at a vantage point of sorts in terms of the fact that when I'm working on the music for the film, I heavily rely on technology. But uh, I constantly have to step back and say to myself, all that is great, you have so many options, you have a little pin here and a thing there, and you can run the best color over it, you can mix it this way. But uh, at the end of the day, there are certain things that can never be replaced by technology, like the human voice, or the acoustics in a room, or the warmth of a particular instrument. And I don't think it should be replaced. And uh, today, I think another interesting thing is, of like a brother was talking about performing live. Uh, it's very interesting for me to step into that era where we're mixing live energy with technology. And uh, it's a very interesting time to maintain that balance and not go crazy. And like I gave you a terrible example, it's like decorating your home and going to a tile store and forgetting that your whole house is blue and picking red, green and everything. That question was quite interesting. 
Um, I think it's to do with the audience, the target audience that we all deal with. Uh, and uh, there are certain expectations that the Indian audience has. You know, that's when we were talking about why individual artists music-wise don't do well, or, or there are different producers when it comes to, say, an, an animation film or a new genre film, is that risk, risk element. So I think um, we can't compare India as such to the world market because we have our nativity that plays a big role. Same thing when it comes, when it comes to Japan films in Japan with, with their films and American films. But the advantage that American films and English films has is that worldwide audience be accepted. Like a 2012, again, you know, if, if it had to be done targeting only the Tamil speaking audience, you're taking a big risk there because they, they don't understand it as, as complex as the world coming to an end and things like that. So I think it's about the target audience. And uh, we, as an industry, I think as of now, we've been catering to what our audience has been expecting. And it's been changing again, like, you know, change is the only thing constant. So I think we're, we're, we're as of now, also playing it safe, yeah? We're not taking that much of a risk yet. I, I think at this point, uh, something that my dad said, which was very interesting, is we have Bollywood and Tollywood. But if you try and call the Japanese industry by an offshoot over Hollywood, the, the question really comes down to not even about how much time you're spending on creativity, but uh, being a part of this, this entire global market, finding your own voice, and then relating that to the people in a modern way. The pressure doesn't hamper creativity in any way, but it just makes you extra careful because you're expected to know when you're from a film lineage, from when you're born, you're expected to know a little more than the others. And the lenience an audience would take with a newcomer or a deputant in not just not acting as be it a director or a producer or anything in any of those fields, we are, we need to need to succeed. So it's it again sums down to the genre and the audiences we're trying to stick with. So I think that's that's ultimately where it ends up. It, it does and doesn't, I'd say, because you are going to think of the saleability of the product you're creating. So that's when you need to put aside your personal taste and, and, and deliver what the people are going to expect from you. So I think, um, to an extent, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, don't you think, Shruti? I think it's not about selling your soul at the crossroads anymore. It's really about uh, finding a way to navigate the crossroads at this point. Yeah. And uh, what efforts we've made, uh, or rather I've made, to do in this space is We've been constantly working on different genres of films. If you see, uh, take for example, Leader, the film that's, that I'm doing right now, is a political drama, which is not a classic newcomer's first film. And working with a director like Shekhar Kamala, who is not a classical commercial stroke, asterisk, whatever, mass, whatever you would call that. So I think that's that's where the industry is moving to. It's moving to new genres, new cinema. Worldwide when it comes to using the internet. So I think. Um, we already, the media, the entire entertainment seg segment, you know, we talk about gaming or promos that you download or even websites where people log on for bites and promotions of films and, uh, and anything. I think internet is very important and we have been utilizing it as an entertainment uh, industry, but doing it right is what we're talking about when it comes to, again, both you, the internet people, then, and the artists and the producers, we both benefit out of it and the public gets what they need to get in the right way. So I think that's the gap we're trying to uh, fill, but uh, Bill, yeah, but then as of now, we're completely for internet. Please, we need you guys. As, as a musician, I would say that we be completely, as an independent musician, we solely depend only on the internet right now because if major labels are not signing people, then you don't have hard CDs to give out to people. The only thing you have is the internet. And uh, there's, there's so many sites like uh, MySpace or the Reverb Nation that connects the whole community of world musicians together that would not happen without the internet. So I'm all for it, actually. They called it legal internet. I don't know what that means. But uh, trying to bar quality, I mean, there is, there is a pirate who's like on land, in, on the internet. So you guys have legal access to content. How much better are you than the pirate? If you can get way better, I'm saying we're all for it. Now, if, if you all are not as good or if you're not better than the pirate, I don't see that changing anymore.